Welcome back to episode number 31 in our Oxygen Not Included Redux series. We have all of our rockets uh, back in our rocket bay. Oh, I forgot to put the suit on. So he got scalded coming out. Okay, no problem. I am working today on a few upgrades. First of all is I'm redesigning a spacefarer launcher or spacefarer capsule for um, our system so that we have a few more advanced things going on. Part of that is I'm gonna be putting in an AtmoSuit dock that's gonna be wired into our gas system so that it will recharge it so that when they leave the bay, they have an AtmoSuit on, and when they come in, they take their AtmoSuit off and um, are all set. It might lead to some issues with us being able to have them come in. I'll have to work out the system for that. But the matter of fact, we have oxygen in here now. So let's enable this so we can start testing that. Um, I had it disabled because somebody came in, built it. They were stuck in here and there was no oxygen in the room. There was also no suit, so they couldn't get to put the suit back on and leave. So for now, I'm going to enable it just to test it. Um... <laughs> Oh, actually, no, I can't, I can't enable it yet because I don't have any power set up. For it. We're getting there. But the idea is that this room will be um, set up to make it so that whenever they leave, they have a suit on. So I won't have to make them put the suit back on before the rocket lands so that they don't get scalded. And then when they go to a new planetoids and we're using this as their uh, home while they're setting up the base on that planetoid, they will put on a suit. The way it's going to work is it will recharge the oxygen in here by using the oxalite that's here. So it'll pump oxygen out of the room. And instead of us just pumping it back into the room like we have been doing, it will first fill up any Atmo suit that's in here, and then it'll come back out. In. So that way the Atmo suit, when they're in here doing their thing, will always be filling back up and they'll be set. Uh, I think that I'll be able to fit everything in that I need. This, this room here, if we look at our rooms, in order to make a luxury barracks, we need 12 spaces. So this one, if we look, if we go back to our original design, it's just a mirror of this room. So it's on the other side, just because it fits better with here. This room up here is our dining hall, and it is enough space for it. We have six tiles across with two, that's 12, so that'll fit it. We'll be able to put our food and our radiation pills in here. In fact, we can put that in now. We'll need two refrigerators for that. And our rocket control station is in there just like it was before. Uh, the only other things we need to fit in is we need to get a battery in here somewhere so we can store power inside. Though I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna try to figure out how to make that work without the battery so that we, because we have a battery on the rocket, I just was having trouble with that working, but I'm going to mess around with it in here to try to figure out how it works. And then all we have to do is put in our filtration system. The next thing I'm working on in our rocket upgrades is a problem I've been having on this. This rocket was the first one to show it. I'm having a lot of problems with heat, and it's because the, the water, I think, I think it's because the water coming in here is pretty hot. It's heating up the inside of this room, and there's nowhere for it to vent any heat to. It was building up to the point where things were starting to break. Part of that was because I had a lot of the plumbing made out of lead, which has a really low overheat temperature comparatively. And so I upgraded them to steel so they wouldn't have a problem. But I also don't want a lot of heat building up in here. So what I did is I changed some of the piping around. I'm going to pause it so that we can look at it. Uh... Right now, they're still upgrading all the pipes to be insulated. So the idea is that they won't have any temperature change or not a lot of temperature change until they come down here. There'll be a radiant section that pulls the, that evens out the heat, and then it will vent back out. And so while it's sitting in space, the water will just be sitting there and going into, the, into our bathroom like normal. While it's in dock, this will be connected to a pipe that I'm putting here that pumps the water back out and drops it off into our water tank down here. So that way it'll cycle through and while while the rocket is sitting, 
it should cool down the room. In order to do that, though, I need to work on another issue, which is that this water tank is getting really hot. It's just a combination of all the waters coming in. This water is cold, but this water is not. And so the balance, since I'm getting more of this than I am this, the water overall is ending up hotter. So like this water is at 61 degrees, this water is at 13, this one's at 45. So it's kind of in between the two, but it's more slated towards this. What I'm doing, I'm gonna put in a system down here with a coolant pipe, and I'm just gonna have it put a, a couple of lines in here just to cool down this tank. Might not be the most efficient way, but I think over a long period of time it'll work. The other thing I could do is cool down this water, but eh, that might be a better way to do it. But this place is just so packed full of pipes and everything already, and it would be a real pain. I have some water that spilled down here. I wonder what that's. It might have been a steam issue. See if I can mop it. That's eh, too much. We'll have to do something to fix that. That's that's so it'll be on my to do list, but I have other things that are more pressing at the moment. So yeah, we're gonna cool down this tank. We're gonna get that set up. Uh, I want to finish upgrading this interior and figuring it all out, and then I'm going to slowly change all of these to match it. But for now, I just want to get them fueled back up so I can send them back out and continue with our project of mapping out our entire. Uh, galaxy. So we did another big section up here. We went through, found a bunch of uh, different fields, but we're ready to send some more rockets out. Um, and we have our mining rocket to go mine some things. Um, let's check it, take a look and see some of these things. Um, if there's anything really interesting to get. I think the most interesting one, if I can find it, we have lots of different things in here. Was one somewhere? One. Nope. Anyway, there's all all kinds of different things that we can collect, and we're slowly exposing all of it. So this has like water and hydrogen. This one has some methane. Um, this one has tungsten, which we didn't have access to before. And this one also has tungsten. So yeah, lots of things we can up we can mine. I may send someone out to one of these two, the glimmering asteroid fields, to get some of this so that we can have some tungsten, so we can play around with that. Um, but yeah, I want to get some rockets back in motion. So while I'm working on upgrading the new spacefare capsule, we'll have some people out in doing their thing. So let's go back and check out our rockets. This one, we have fuel enough to go 32 tiles. This is, oh, this is our uh, module for landing on a new planetoid. So this one can stick for now. This is the one I'm working on designing the new coolant system upgrades. This one here is a uh, mining rocket. So let's check. This one has the fuel it needs and inside, we have everything is set up. We have food, we have water, we have oxygen. So let's do, let's go back out here. So this one, we're going to do, change it to crew only for now. And then we're going to change its destination. Oh, you know what? One thing I did not do, I just realized it is we never emptied our storage. So let's drop that off. And we're going to do some sweeping. Sweep this one up. Uh, another upgrade I want to do is I want to make it so that I have one of these bays that's designed for unloading. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to have a door down here that's set up with automation so that when we get stuff in, we just open the door and let it drop down farther so it gets down to here. That way we can just empty it, drop the stuff out, and not worry about the rocket heating it back up when we take off so we can immediately turn around and take off. So let's deconstruct this tile for now. We'll deconstruct this one and this one. 
and I'm going to put that at high priority so we can get it done while we're recording here. That means everything will drop down, and I'm going to see what happens when I put a airlock here. I think it will be fine because I don't think that rocket platform actually needs anything under it once it's built to be functional. Yeah, it's still ready even though there's a hole here. And so this will be, um, we'll set up some automation. So let's do that. We'll just take an automation wire and we want to make sure it's made out of steel because of all the heat here. And we'll run it down here to a signal switch. And then we can just manually open it, let all the items fall down, and then close it again so that it's all set up. So we're good there. So let's go back. We're going to change our destination here now that we've gotten that rocket emptied. And I think that we'll send this rocket up to this glimmering asteroid field in order to do some mining. This rocket is still fueling up. This one is still fueling up. And this is our one where we're working on upgrading our space fare module. So let's begin the launch here. Pretty sure everything is set. One thing I want to do before I forget to do it. Uh, I'm going to have to wait till it goes into space because it is currently in process of launch. So much heat to deal with down here. Someday I'd like to design something where I can capture that heat. Launch it. But it's not necessary. I, I am glad we set it up so that the rocket bay is up higher so it all immediately dissipates in space. Because otherwise we'd be dealing with lots of problems. But it very quickly goes. This airlock, though, got really hot. How hot? Um, 1600 degrees. <laughs> Um, melting points not till 2400 though, but that might be an issue. We may have to think about how we're going to do that. Hmm. Okay. Well, we'll get to that when we get to it. For now, let's go to back to the star map. Let's look at that rocket. What I forgot to do is have Van Buren take off his Atmos suit. And again, that's why I'm designing the new one, so that they will just do that when they come in. But for now, he's set. He can chill in here and do his thing. And he's on his way. We'll finish our upgrades inside both of these test rockets while we wait for the fuel to refill these two rockets before we can send them off for more exploration. I am still working on our rocket upgrades, but I finally got something useful out of our mini pod, and that is a pokey shell spawn. For one of our achievements, we need to wrangle, or we need to tame a pokey shell. Also, we're running very low on the lime, and pokey shells are a really good source for lime. So, setting up a farm for the pokey shells isn't a bad idea. For now, I just have him being wrangled, and I put a I set this here to Pokey Shell, so when he gets wrangled, he'll get put over here and dropped off. So we need to set this to store extra critters so that it will allow him to get put there. And then let's go in here and see Pokey Shells eat either polluted dirt or rot pile. So frankly, we can put both of those in here. Um, as far as polluted dirt goes, I'm pretty sure I have a ton of it. But let's check, see, I'm going to minimize that so I can see all consumables. Or no, that's organic. Blue to dirt, we have 274 tons on Gurgani. So yeah, we have a good deal of it to use. So let's check out, grab the Poke Shell yet? Oh, you just wrangled him. You're bringing him over. Oop, auto save always causing me trouble. So the pokey shell, we have to just figure out what environment he needs and see if 
just putting them in a regular stable here will be okay, or if we need to build a new one. I have been having some thoughts on how I want to do a stable, so I'm going to start moving them away from over here, but um, it's not something I wanted to work on in this episode. I want to finish my rocket, my, my rocket bay upgrades first, so hopefully this place will be okay for him so that we can start getting more pokey shells. Let's check what he needs. So we go to pokey shell spawn entry. Pokey shells need to be in between 15 and 70 for comfort, which is fine. They need to have a diet of that, and then we'll give us sand, which is also really good. Now we need to have a source of sand for this colony. Um, and then there's a couple different morphs. So it doesn't look like they need any specific environment as far as um, breathability goes. They would live in anything, as far as I can tell. So. This area should be okay for us to um, have. Oops, not the button I wanted. We should be okay for us to have the pokey shells living here. So we'll get. They're going to grab some polluted dirt, start delivering it here. Let's set this also to. Instead of having cobalt and aluminum in here, let's add um, polluted dirt. I guess we could do rot pile too in this storage bin. And then over here, we're going to have this pick up everything. And then we're going to go back down to organic. Organic. We're going to turn off polluted dirt and rot pile. That way, when it gets dropped out for them to eat, the this doesn't pick it up. So it's going to clean this room out. This pokey shell will have everything it needs in order to grow. Um, the big important thing with pokey shells is that uh, when they grow up, if there's an egg nearby, they become violent. So any duplicates coming in here would be in trouble. But because we already have this auto sweeper set up, as soon as they lay an egg, this thing is going to grab it, put it in here, and send it off. So that means we shouldn't have any issues with that. The last thing we want to do for that setup is to come up here, and we're going to grab, cancel this one. We don't need any smooth hatchlings anymore. And let's grab a uh, pokey shell or egg should be in here. Maybe they're not because we haven't had any yet. Maybe we'll have to wait. Well, intro. That is the egg for pokey shells. So now when we get them, they'll get incubated and we'll be able to increase our population over here. Um, really, we just need to tame this one to get the achievement. But like I said, we're going to use their shells to make lime and they're going to convert our polluted dirt, which is just sitting around being useless for us right now, into sand for us. And sand we could use to set up a filtration system so that we can filter polluted uh, polluted water to water, which, while we don't have a lot of polluted water here, one thing we could do is right now we have water being pumped into this colony so that we can use it in the bathrooms and stuff like that. Instead of having water coming in, we could have it so polluted water comes in and we filter it on need and then we'd have more polluted water so that our crops could grow faster so that's something down the road for us to do for now we're just going to leave the pokey shell to do its thing and we're going to continue working on our rocket bay upgrades Just taking a look at this airlock to see if we were needed to do anything with it the heat from it is dissipating and so i think that it will heat up when the rocket takes off but by the time we hit another rocket here to take off again, the heat should have dissipated enough that it's not going to cause any problems. Um, we're not going to get to the point where this airlock melts. And the heat's not really going anywhere except maybe into this tile. I want to see the wire picking up heat. Automation wire. It is also heated up, but it is also steel, and it's decreasing in heat. I think that'll be okay. My concern is the pipe. The insulated pipe there is heating up like crazy. 
So we may need to redirect this insulated pipe so that it does not pass through there. So let's actually do that a while. Um, plumbing, insulated pipe, there's ceramic, and we'll just have it go bypass like that. I'm going to leave that one that we've already constructed there, just because I want to see what happens with it. Ceramic is has a melting point of 1850, which is kind of close to where we got this when we heated it up. So it may actually end up melting ceramic, but I'm just going to leave it there for the test. Let's go to this door. I'm going to suppress that power message. I'm not going to power it. But as far as temperatures go, it is it is down to 900 and it's kind of sitting. I think that'd be fine as long as when it comes along again, we don't have more power going to it. The question is, if we open this up, does it change temperature? Just trying to test it, see how all these things work. Okay, so it doesn't seem to look like the temperature changes much based on whether it's open or closed. That's fine. We'll leave all that to go and see what happens with it and work on that. Um, let's go in here. We're still working on all of our pipes. We're still having heat issues. This pipe broke. Uh, oh, no, the hand sanitizer broke. It's made out of copper. Let's deconstruct that. We'll put in a steel hand sanitizer. That'll fix that issue. But we are, we still have a lot of heat in here, but it's lowering. Let's check out our uh, water coming through. So the water's coming in 45 degrees. It's leaving at 45 degrees. So for now, it's keeping this room at 45 degrees because that's what the temperature of our water is. If we can lower our overall water temperature, it'll actually act as a cooling for this room. But 45 degrees is okay. I can handle 45 degrees. I couldn't handle 75 degrees, which is what it was getting. Um, all right, so we'll let that go, and we'll let this finish. Let's check on our other capsule that we're constructing. That's this one down here in the spaceship uh, LV, which would be 55. Okay, so this room is this. This is lower priorities right now, so they haven't got anything done. We'll have to wait for this to get finished. Let's. This is our. This is already problematic. I, I made this. These out of iron. Don't want them made out of iron. Let me grab these. Make them out of steel. Set these at a higher priority so that they can get done. because those, those are going to be our ladder to get up to here. And then once this is all built, then I can start working out everything else in this room and we will finish that. I hope six has been refueled. I have Tyler in here. Tyler is the one who got some damage. Forgot to put a suit back on. He's slowly uh, healing. It's fine. We have oxygen for him. We have food for him. We have water for him. We have everything he needs, and we have set a destination for his rocket. That I have him going to this spot right here, which is fine. We're going to do some exploration, and so this rocket is all ready to launch. So let's double check the checklist. Everything's good. Let's launch it out. So this rocket we're going to launch to here, we're going to send it up here, and then we'll have it come back down and sort of get a, a big swath of this area explored. You can see we have some meteors that are flying around to hit our planetoids. Not a problem. Get into that. And 
That rocket's done. This one's almost done refueling. Then we're going to send that one back out to do exploration on the other side of the galaxy. But you can see we're doing pretty good as far as keeping our rockets moving. They take a while to refuel, but that's okay. Um, as far as our upgrades go, this one we're still finishing up the last few pipes in here. It has already taken effect. All the temperature in here has leveled out at the 45 degrees as we saw. Um, we're working on our new coolant system down here. If we look at it. I have uh, everything queued up to be built just to get started. I'm running some power so I can get some super coolant set up into this area. Uh, both for our liquid lock that we're going to have here and in our reservoir. So that just needs to be constructed. And if we look at our last rocket right over here. Check out our interior in here. We're slowly getting everything built. I have power going, so now this has power. Problem is, is that I think that this is gonna say it has, Atmos suit dock is low in power because there's nowhere to store it. So I am going to put in a battery. We're gonna try to put it right here. I wanna see, I have to finish constructing everything else in here, but I wanna see if this is gonna cause a problem for our bathroom, and if it is, I'll probably use doors to put around the battery, close it off, because this room is much bigger than it needs to be anyway, and then we'll be fine. Um, I can do doors, and then I could put a block here. Maybe I could do blocks there. Let's try that now. If I do tiles like this, that'll still leave the room fine. That'll give us a place to put some storage, because that's the next thing we're going to need to figure out. Actually, I don't know if we'll even need the storage. Anyway, we'll figure that out, but this will be a good setup. And um, we'll make sure that all of our morale is set up, and then we'll get our filtration system in, and then this rocket will be ready to do some testing in. Last thing I want to check on, even though today was all about the rocket bay upgrades, let's check and see how our Pokeball is doing. He's still a tiny baby. Another couple of cycles before he gets to adulthood and he can be tamed. But his room is all set up. He has the polluted dirty needs. He has the um, rot piles that he could eat. And this is all set up so as soon as he lays an egg, it'll get taken out so we won't have any angry pokey shells to murder my duplicate. So I think we're all set here to finish that up. Let's check out the achievement for that. See what, what other ones we're still looking for. I'll take a moment to load it. I know that we're looking for a Dreco and then the Gassy Moo. Let's see what else we need for that. Oh, we need to get a Puff. So we're going to be waiting for a Puffed and a Dreco to come out of the um, printing pod. And then we'll get the Gassy Moo on Moomiaw, which we're still working on. And the pokey shell is in process now so we're getting close for that one same with the, this achievement because once we get the move we'll have that one as well and then this this achievement we're up to 42 cycles now this is just going to take us a while but it's in process we don't have to do anything else once we have a planetoid that is getting hit with meteors we'll just set up some bunker doors to block the meteors and that'll get this achievement and then the only thing left for our base game achievements is job suitability getting all of our duplicates to run exosuit errands for 10 straight cycles. And again, that's gonna be pretty difficult to figure out how to do it. I'm not quite sure yet. And then we have some DLC achievements to do, and then we will be finished with all of our achievements, and we can work on the final achievements to finish the game, the archeology, span great escape, and home sweet home. And then it will be done with all of our achievements. We're definitely making progress towards it. Hope you enjoyed watching this episode. We're going to continue to work on the upgrades and get our rocket bay finished between this episode and the next. And probably for the next episode, we'll keep working on that. And, uh, and then we'll just keep working on our achievements. So I hope you enjoyed watching it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.